So friends, if you were here before we painted this room last year, on our back wall we had our vision statement for our church, which was to walk in God's love and give it away to Toronto and the world. And we have had that vision statement for 30 years. Uh, the original statement was to walk in God's love and give it away. And then when a revival began in 1994, where somewhere between four and five million people visited this church, we needed to adapt our vision statement because we realized that it wasn't just about us, it was about Toronto and the world. Well, we uh, sp have been spending the last year thinking and praying about wh who are we now? We've just felt we needed to re-examine what is our purpose, what's the vision that God has for us as a church. And so this month we're sharing with you the vision. And it's very, very simple. I don't know if we're gonna have it on a banner, but our new vision statement is this, encounter God's transforming presence. That's our new, our new words, encounter God's transforming presence. So last week, we talked about the word presence. In fact, we did it more than we talked about it. Just the flow that we have, the, the reason we worship the way we do is about God's presence. Our theory is this, if God comes in the room, it could be a really good meeting. If God's not in the room, it could be quite boring. And so everything, the first half of our public meetings is to welcome God's presence. You'll notice that we don't do a lot of happy, clappy, bounce up and down songs. We do them occasionally. But if God's presence is it, we want to push in as quick as we can and get there. And so that's, that's the word presence. Good things happen when God shows up in the room. The second part of that that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about encounter. And to, next, not tomorrow, next Sunday, we're going to talk about the word transformation. But I think, not I think, I know everyone needs to have three encounters. Three and you're here today and you may go, I don't know what he's talking about. That's why I'm here. <laughs> We're gonna look at the life of, of Paul who had a, amazing encounters with God and we're gonna look at what the Bible says about these three journeys. But before we do that, we're gonna have uh, Jonatus, our youth pastor, he's gonna come up and we have some youth to talk about their encounters. Yeah, good morning everyone. I just wanna invite Shanique and Joy up here on the stage. But uh, we, we just finished our one-week camp um, last Sunday, and we had an incredible time there where God was just, you know, just moving in, in such a loving um, way. And most, most of our youth were encountering God in moments where we, we pushed through, exactly like we were saying, Steve. We pushed through after worship. Um, and we were just kind of giving space for, uh, for God to move. So here, here are a couple testimonies, and we're going to keep showing along the month. But uh, we have here, what's your name? Shanique. What's up, Shanique? Nothing much. Cool. Um, Shanique, tell me, um, we, we had kind of an encounter weekend in the mornings and in devotional. And then one of those days was, was you know, you, you felt like God was encountering you and doing something in your heart. What, what was the, 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 the ministry? What was happening? Um, well, we woke up for our morning devos at chapel and... Uh, morning devos, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Tammy and Sophia, they were talking about, um, like, the father heart and they're talking about, like, identity and stuff. And, like, I already had been through, like, a lot of that, but you know those ones where it's just kind of, like, it kind of goes from your head to your heart and it just kind of, like, sinks in and really, like, just, just gets in there, you know? So, like, they were talking just about, um, I guess I just started to realize that God is actually, like, he's actually going to be there for me, like, no matter what. And I'm just so loved and beautiful and worth it. And I, I'm always going to, he just blessed me with so many friends that I can talk to every day. And that's going to remind me every single day that, like, I'm, I'm worth it, like, and I'm so loved, and that I'm a child of God, I'm a, I'm a princess, I'm a queen, and that um, if it's... <laughs> and um, just reminding myself, like, who I am and who is telling me that. So if it's toxic, even if it's from, like, some friends, even if it's from family or even a stranger that kind of just got you a little, like, triggered and and it really just kind of puts you off. Like, it doesn't really matter what they say because the only truth comes from God. And yeah. That's awesome. 
Shinique, Shinique has an amazing heart. She just graduated from the youth, so she's in university right now. So if you want to stretch your hands and say, bless you, Shinique. Yeah, I love you. Eh? All right, and this one is, what's your name? Joy. Nice hair, Joy. Thank you. You're welcome. Joy, um, I heard that you got healed during some moment of worship. It was none of us were praying for you. Um, but, but tell me what that moment was like. So it was after worship, but there was still worship music playing, and a bunch of my friends and I were just in a circle, and we're just worshiping together, and we're praying, and we're really filled in, with the Holy Spirit. And then I felt God say, like, I'm going to heal you. And I was like, yeah, I want to be healed. So I started yelling, healing, healing, healing. And then all of a sudden, I didn't have any pain anymore. And I'm like, is this just because I'm sitting down? So I got up, and I'm doing all these stretches, and I still feel a little bit of pain, so I keep healing, healing. And then I'm doing all these stretches, and I have no more pain, and I couldn't do any of this stuff before. And then I got super, like, even more Holy Spirit and super hyped about that, and I was just jumping around, and it was, it was so great. So Nice. So what could you not do before? Um, it hurt to bend, like, my back and my neck, so I can and my back and neck and like and I heard you doing some crazy stretches afterwards what, what, what do something that you could not do before isn't it awesome come on joy is awesome say stretch your hands to joy and say bless you joy Anyways, bless you girls. Thanks for sharing your testimony. These girls are awesome. They just totally pressed in the whole camp. Those guys are on fire, man. I need to get them up here and pray for the whole church because it was awesome. Very good. Thank you, Jonathan. Good. So you're ready to look at these three encounters we're supposed to have. So if we can go back onto the screen, please. And the number one encounter, the first one that everyone needs to have is to meet Jesus. Jesus himself said to a guy named Nicodemus, who was a religious person, who was a leader in the Jewish faith at the time of Jesus, and Jesus said to him, you must be born again. Must is a pretty strong word, isn't it? The reason you must be born again is because you must. It's that simple. It, if you want to meet God in eternity, you must be born again, is what the Bible teaches. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. And friends, those of you that are new to Catch the Fire, almost every Sunday, we are going to give you an opportunity to bring your friends, and we are going to talk about connecting with Jesus. It's part of our culture as our church. It usually happens after the, after the worship, but we give an opportunity for people to meet Jesus because Jesus said, you must be born again. And we care about people's eternity. And uh, this morning, we're going to give, we're, by the way, we're going to give the three encounters, we're going to give all three of those opportunities in our ministry time this morning. The Apostle Paul started out as a guy who hated Christians. He was a leader in the Jewish faith. He was a Pharisee, which is the religious, one of the religious parties. He was a lawyer. He actually was commissioned by the Jewish leaders to find, capture, and kill Christians. And as he was getting ready to go into Damascus, Syria, something happened. He met Jesus. He had one of those encounters. And he tells about that story twice, and Luke, who's the author of the book of Acts, tells it once. And so we're going to read Paul's version of what he said happened. Acts chapter 22, about noon as I came near Damascus, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Friends, your connecting with Jesus may not be the Hollywood effects. Sounds, light, smoke, all those kind of things. It could be, but it could just be a simple thing where your heart knows, I need to give my life to Jesus. That's the way it was for me. I was eight years of age. We had a, I was going to a children's meeting. We had a guest speaker, and he explained that I needed to be born again, and all of a sudden it made sense. And I remember he said, if you'd like to give your life to Jesus, come up to the front. And I went to the front crying in front of all my friends, and I knew that I was born again that day. It was a good thing. I was eight years of age. So Paul has this experience where he falls to the ground. He hears a voice. The light is so bright that he's blind, instantly blinded by this light. And he says uh, to this voice, who are you, Lord? Can I just say, friends, that if something like this happens to you, I would suggest that you humble yourself and say the word Lord as quick as you can. 
If someone is able to do this to you, you respect them right away. And so whether Saul already is figuring out that this is Jesus, but he begins by Lord. That's a good statement. So he's well on his way. Who are you, Lord? I asked. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions, they saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of Jesus who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord? I asked. Get up, the Lord said, and go into Damascus, and there you'll be told what you have been assigned. My companions led me by the hand into Damascus because of the brilliance of the light had blinded me. A man named Ananias, the Bible tells us that he's an older man. He came to see me, as it turns out, three days later. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and he said, Brother Saul, you don't get to be called a brother until you become a follower of Jesus. So Ananias has been waiting for three days, it would appear. He's wrestling with, oh my goodness, God, you asked me to go and this guy that's been killing the Christians and has come to our town, you're, I'm to go and pray for him? What if this is a big trick? What if I'm the first on his list? And so Ananias has been wrestling with this. And the Holy Spirit tells him, no, 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 he has met Jesus. And so when Ananias hears that, he agrees with that. And he goes, and his opening word is, brother Saul, receive your sight. Can you imagine? You're in a room for three days, and someone comes in, and they say, brother Saul, receive your sight. And boom, he's healed. And there's more that's going to happen. We'll read that in a moment. Brother Saul, receive your, your sight. At that very moment, I was able to see. And then he said, he gets a prophetic word. The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one, to see Jesus and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all the people of what you have seen and heard. Now, what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized and wash your sins away, calling on his name. Ananias is giving him a prophetic word of his destiny right away. Friends, did you know that when we give opportunity for people to respond at the front, uh, Pastor Curtis has about 50 people that join these people right at the front, begin to pray with them right at the front, who, people who give their lives to Jesus. We normally take them into the patio room over here, the side room, and while they're there, they're having more prayer and often prophetic ministry. The prayers that are being said over them are beginning to pour into their destiny, beginning to speak who they are. It's, we do that because of this. This is what the Bible says happens when you meet Jesus, is your, your destiny unfolds, all the things about what God has for you. There's possibility of knowing those things in your spirit. And so it's part of what we do. It's part of what, what uh, Ananias was doing for him. And he's asking him, the next step is be baptized. And so we had the privilege this morning of baptizing people. And some of them were born again uh, over the last couple months. I love that. People are making a statement, which baptism is, I'm a follower of Jesus. So that's the first encounter that every single person is supposed to have. Who has had an encounter with Jesus in the room? Hands up. Perfect. Now, as I'm talking about this, if you're going, I don't know that I've had one of those to that extent. When we have our prayer time, our ministry time at the end of the meeting, I'm going to be asking you friends to come and stand right over here, and we're going to have a team of people, the very people who will take you into the room and prophesy over you. We're going to have those people up to the front, and if you're here and you're any kind of doubt, do I really know Jesus? Friends, you need to know Jesus before you leave today. Any doubt, when we have the ministry time, we're going to get you to come over here. The second encounter, slides, is we need to meet the Holy Spirit. And friends, this is, this for some people is the moment you meet Jesus can be right then, but for Paul, it was three days later when Ananias shows up. When you give your life to Jesus, the Bible says at that very moment, all of God comes into you. So it's not like you get A, B, and C, Father, Son, Holy Spirit at three different times. All of God comes into you at that moment, but... You can get upgrades in the Holy Spirit. You can get gifts from the Holy Spirit, supernatural abilities to be able to function in supernatural areas. Like you get, begin to be very prophetic. You begin to be very good at healing the sick. You begin to get words of faith. You begin to have faith for the supernatural. You begin to be more caring, like my wife. You begin to, to just be a giver. All sorts of supernatural abilities come. Anointings can come. 
when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And so that little expression is used, different words, but basically in the Bible, it teaches that after you've been born again, either right then or at a subsequent time, you can have another very distinct Holy Spirit moment. For Paul, it's three days later. And this is how, uh, how Luke describes it. Ananias went to the house and he entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again and he got up. And friends, I'm going to guess that if the purpose of laying out of hands of Ananias was for him to have his sight back and to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm going to guess that if it tells us that his sight came back, that he also was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't talk about that, of what that was like. But for some people, being touched by the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, can be very dramatic. When Sandra and I first met the Holy Spirit, it was at this church here. We were good Baptist pastors. And by good Baptist pastors, I mean we were good with Jesus, not so good with the Holy Spirit. Our tradition was that we didn't need the Holy Spirit anymore because, well, we just, we were sort of wrong teaching in my mind. We believe that the Holy Spirit didn't function today. That the Holy Spirit used to function, but wasn't anymore. That healing stopped, that prophecy stopped. We were, that was the tradition that we were taught, and so that's what we were teaching other people. My uh, younger brother, some of you know Richard, he's the pastor of the Ottawa Vineyard. Richard had an experience in California at John Wimber's church, and John was the leader of the vineyard. And so when he came back in 1993 from that conference, he told me that he'd had an experience with the Holy Spirit. In our Baptist tradition, I was supposed to now phone head office and have him fired. I'm not going to do that for my brother. And my brother began to influence me in the things of the Holy Spirit, talk to me about those kind of things, and I just wasn't really, really sure about that. Anyways, long story short, when the revival began in January of 1994 in this building, not this building, but with this church in our previous building, on a weekend, on a Thursday night, about 120, 130 people from our church met at a meeting with Randy Clark, who's a vineyard pastor from St. Louis. And the Holy Spirit came, and what I hear was that almost every single person met the Holy Spirit that night. Almost every single person. John Arnott says that when Randy said, come Holy Spirit, there was bedlam for a few seconds, and nobody was sitting in their chairs. They were on their chairs, underneath their chairs, in the aisles. They were rolling, they were crying, they were laughing. It was bizarre. Some looked like they were dead. It was like the Holy, a Holy Spirit bomb went off in the meeting. Well, that shocked the church as it, as it would. The same thing happened the next night at the youth meeting. The same thing happened on Saturday at the kids meeting. And on Sunday morning, it happened again. And John Arnott said to, said to Randy, you're not going home. You're staying one more night. Well, it turned out that that one more night became 12 years of nightly meetings and this church hosted, primarily in this room, almost 5 million people over 12 years of nightly meetings. If you're new to our church, that's our history. There's a reason why the carpet is worn out, friends. Too many people. There's a reason why we had to redo the bathrooms. Too many people. Anyways, Sandra and I were invited to that one and only extra meeting with Randy Clark on a Monday night, January 25, 1994. And we were good Baptists, so that meant we're going to sit in the back row. The back, back row meant like eight rows back. The building sat maybe 300. And we're there, it's a cold night, and we put our coats in the back of our chairs. And at the end of the sermon, Randy Clark gave an invitation for people who were dry, who were burnt out, who were slightly angry with their spouse. Basically, he was talking to me. Uh, <laughs> If you need to be refreshed in the things of God, if you need another touch of the Holy Spirit, come to the front. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm a good Baptist. And so Sandra and I sat in our row. We watched as people at the front were being prayed for. And the prayer ministry team would put their hand on someone's shoulder, 
grab their hand, and most people were having God encounters right in front of our eyes. This was new to us. We weren't used to this. And we're watching people cry. We're watching people laugh. We're watching people on the ground. It looked like they're dropping dead. Turns out it's no one, a couple of people got injured, mostly good. Uh, but it turned out they're experiencing the peace of God. And by the way, friends, Galatians, when it talks about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, remember those nine fruit of the Spirit? The first one, love. People were experiencing love. They're crying. They're just uncontrollable connections. Joy, that's laughter. Peace, that's when you fell down. And all of those things were happening, and we decided we would just watch. And then the prayer ministry team started doing something a little dangerous. They ran out of people to pray for, and now they're praying for the people in the rows. Uh-huh. So because we're row eight, we got a couple minutes. And so we decided to put our coats on, and we're going to go. And as we're getting ready to go, Randy Clark, who had just on the way down the aisle to the meeting, John Arnott said, oh, these are Baptists over here. And we, uh, uh. <laughs> And so Randy, when he sees us putting the coats on, ran down the aisle. And he goes, guys, can I pray for you? And it's, it was that awkward, oh boy. And I knew, friends, that if I assumed the position that everyone else was doing, if I went like that, my life could change. And Sandra and I both made that choice. And we closed our eyes, put our hands out. And Randy started to pray. And within three seconds of Randy starting to pray, he stopped and he says to Sandra, what's wrong? Well, I don't know what's wrong because my eyes are closed. <laughs> now I open my eyes and I'm looking over and Sandra says, I don't want to fall. Randy says, why would you say that? Because I'm about to fall. <laughs> and he goes, he says, I'm not touching you. Well, this makes it more dangerous, friends, that if, if just a prayer is causing my wife who has never fallen in church ever, what's going on here? Well, we were about to experience the Holy Spirit. We didn't know that. Looking back, it's like, we should have done that a long time ago. And friends, when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes with benefits. He comes with gifts. He comes with transformation. Do you know why I was getting rusty and gr uh, grouchy with my wife and my kids? Do you know why I was yelling at my kids every single day as a good Baptist, loving Jesus, loving the Bible? is because I had not welcomed the Holy Spirit. And friends, when you don't welcome the Holy Spirit, no positive change will take place in your life. You can memorize the Bible and just be terrible on the inside of your character. It is the role of the Holy Spirit to change your life. Not you, you can't change your life. I tried, can't be done. You have to have the Holy Spirit. So. <laughs> Almost every meeting, and we're going to do it again today, we have a time, especially when Steve Long leads the meeting, everyone stand up, grab someone's hand, and we welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We almost every meeting give an opportunity for people to come to the front during the meeting, after the meeting, and have someone minister to you because, friends, this is where your life will get changed is with the Holy Spirit. The last encounter is with the Father. And... We don't have it in the scriptures of what Paul's experience was, but we have him talking about it. And so in the book of Romans, he writes, for those who are led by the Holy Spirit, for those who've had the Holy Spirit encounter, you've had number two. Those who are led by the Spirit, you are children of God. That was the girl's first testimony that was just up here. This is what we're talking about, friends. She's experiencing this. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves and so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. Friends, if you act like you have to make Christianity work for you, if you feel it's all on me to grow, to mature, to find my place, you are functioning like an orphan, a spiritual orphan. You do, you're not functioning as God is your father. Orphans don't have a father. And sadly, friends, how do I say this nicely? I was at the top of that list. I knew the Bible. I went to Bible school four years. I learned Greek and Hebrew to be an okay preacher. I learned all those kind of things, but I'm functioning as an orphan because I've not met the Father. I know who the Father is because the Bible says he's love, but I don't know it in my heart. 
Don't know it in my heart. And until you have one of those heart experiences with the Father, you are, you and I will function like slaves, spiritual slaves. It's us to us to do it. Work, 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 work. I got all this stuff I got to do. And friends, Paul says, no, no, no. There's a moment can come where you can have an encounter with the Father where you know that you're a child of God. And the gal that was just sharing, she had her moment at camp. Uh, I'll tell you my story real quick. Some of you, I've shared this before, but I'm gonna say it again because we have newcomers here today. We've had some of the best teachers at this church about the Father's love. One of the best guys was a man named Jack Winter, and he was here in the early 90s teaching. He passed away a long time ago. And then we had a gentleman by the name of Jack Frost that was here, and some of you have heard his talks. He was masterful at helping people to have encounters with God as Father. I would watch these people, I would watch our church, I would go up for prayer, I would be the only one not crying. People are crying all around me, deep agony as their hurts are gone, they realize, oh, I got a father in heaven, he loves me, and I'm going, I know that, but like, what's going on here? Why not me? It's just not happening. My brain is still too analytical. And years ago, I found out that there was a figure skating event on my wife's birthday, April 24, at Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. Every figure skating person there, this was not a competition, this was just a uh, exhibition. Everyone was an Olympic gold medalist or a world champion. And it's this beautiful event, and I got tickets uh, on my wife's birthday for that event. I gave them to her on Valentine's Day, so guys, that was a two for one or, you know, two, uh, two events, one, one, uh, one cost. It was a good, good day for me. I felt very proud of being a dad that day, a husband that day. And so we're there, and I got front row seats. I spent big money, and they didn't have the hockey glass there, and I could put my foot on the, on the ice. That's how close we were. And as they come out and begin to do their dancing and their choreographed things, sometimes individually, sometimes as a group, all of a sudden, all the artistic stuff that's happening began to demonstrate to me that God loved me and I met the father at a figure skating event, front row, and I began to just cry and to weep and weep, and Sandra's sitting beside me and moving just slightly <laughs> over because her husband is having a meltdown <laughs> at a figure skating event. But that's where I met the father. And I cry at national anthems now. I do. I, not even Canadian, sometimes the US, sometimes the English. It's just like, you know, they're singing at a soccer game at the World Cup, God Save the Queen, and I'm... <laughs> My life has been softened. My life has changed because I've met the Father. Usually in February, we're gonna have a guest speaker that's gonna come, and a whole weekend is gonna be devoted to that. And so, can I just say, watch for the next time we talk about a Father Loves You Encounter Weekend, because you need to have one of these encounters, friends. You will go from being a striver to being a son and a daughter. You will begin to know your place in the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit will help you and empower you, but when you know the Father, now you do it well. You do it for the right motives, as opposed to be seen, as opposed to be heard. Now, you don't care about those things. It just changes you. Yep? So friends, we're gonna do all three of those encounters this morning. Would that be okay? So you get to choose which one you'd want. If you've had all three already, you're gonna help do the ministry. So in just a moment, we are gonna say go, and you're gonna go. Over here, we're gonna have people who feel that you need to have a meeting with Jesus. I don't know that I've had one of those yet. I don't know if it took. I don't know if I'm really going to go and see the Father if I was to die today. We're gonna have you come over here. And so who's on the prayer team this morning for starting point? Where's those folks on Curtis's team? Rob, do you wanna just gather your team? How about you stand over here? So those of you on Rob's team, uh, just stand over there. Thank you for us. So that's where you're gonna go. Those of you who haven't met the Father, we're gonna have you come to the front. So if I could get all the prayer ministry team that are here this morning to just come and stand over this side. So prayer team, come up right away, please. Those of you who are helping the minister today, where's the prayer team? Come, come, come. 
good, just begin to stand here. So if you've not had a father experience, we're going to have you come to the front over here. And those of you who feel that you've never had a Holy Spirit encounter, we're going to have you stand up. And then your neighbors who've had all three are going to help lay hands on you. Would that be okay? We did this this morning and it was fun. We had people in all three groups. It was great. We had people, uh, a gentleman that was in the first meeting, uh, his wife was one of the ones being baptized, new follower of Jesus. And she was in like row three and the little group where she was praying, as soon as they said, come Holy Spirit, this lady just got filled with the Holy Spirit. She was speaking in languages that she didn't know. It was really, really good. Those of you seated, if you don't think that you've had a significant Holy Spirit encounter, can I get you to stand up? If you feel that you need to have that moment with the Holy Spirit, can I get you to stand up? Right away, friends, just go ahead. There'll be probably a couple hundred of you. Those of you that feel that you need to have people pray with you this morning to meet the Father, I'm gonna welcome you to begin to come on up here, over here. And those of you that feel that you need to meet Jesus, you're not really sure that you know Jesus. You need to start at number one. I'd like you to come on up over here. Can we do that? So those of you that are standing for Holy Spirit, just stand up real quick, friends. Where are you? You need more of the Holy Spirit. You need to have that first encounter with the Holy Spirit. Okay, church, do you see someone standing around you? I would like you to just, in a group of four and five, go to those people and introduce yourself real quick, and you're gonna be the ones to pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're gonna be the ones to pray for them. Wave your hand if you're standing and no one's come to you. So church, look around behind you. We're helping to be on the ministry team today, helping to pray for people. Wave your hand if no one's come to you. Okay, church, there's a gentleman over here that's got his hands waving. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come right now. So those of you ministering in the seats for the Holy Spirit, you begin to pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Just go ahead and do that. If you need prayer to meet Father up to the front, if you need prayer to meet Jesus, come on over here. Come on over here. I love it, friends. We got people in all, gr all three groups today. Those of you that are seated, we're gonna get to you in just a minute. We'll get to you in just a minute. So Father, would you come in this room and as people begin to meet the Father, may it be an amazing experience. May it be a life transforming experience to know that Father God is more than just a name, that he's Father, that he's loving, he's caring, etc. Father, those over in this group here that are getting to know Jesus right now, Father, I thank you so much for them. May this be a born again moment right now. People meeting Jesus right now. Isn't this amazing, friends? Look how many people are up here. And those of you that are standing to receive more of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and find them right now. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, everyone else, stand up. Everyone else that's here. I'd like you to grab hands with someone that's close to you. And we're going to all receive the Holy Spirit a little bit more today. We're going to do what the Bible says, what Paul says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So grab someone's hand if there's someone there. Holy Spirit, would you come? Holy Spirit, would you come? We welcome your presence right now. Jesus, would you come? Be real to the folks on my right. Father, would you come? and be real to the folks on my left. Holy Spirit, for everyone in our seats right here, come and be real. Now friends, I want you to just do nothing, like don't pray in tongues, don't pray in English or Spanish. Just receive more of the Holy Spirit right now. Just feel his love for you right here, right now. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit come. When the Holy Spirit comes, as Joy said in her story, her testimony today, healing comes, transformation comes, freedom comes. When the Holy Spirit visits, positive things happen. And so we welcome the Holy Spirit for you. If the Holy Spirit chooses today to do character adjustment, 
get rid of anger and put in more love, put in more patience, put in more kindness as a deposit in your life? Holy Spirit, would you do that? Father, those that need, those that need to have fears lift out of them, anxiety to go, bring your peace. Daddy, we choose to welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives. We welcome the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen.